Okay, this is the Oka telescope. Uh, all worse for wear. The Chandra array, that's one of these interferometer things. In fact, if I remember rightly, over here they have the some of the first inter the, the first decent interferometer was actually mounted on the Hooker telescope up there. And what they did is let's see if we can actually see this. There he is, that's it. So that was mounted on the front of the telescope, that big beam. You needed something big to be able to mount a beam like that. And then you've got to get your two mirrors um, collimated within a, a wavelength of light, which is the challenging bit. Anyway, with that, they measured the first diameters of stars. There you go, that's the 100 inch scope. This is the stuff that Hubble, there we go, Hubble breakthrough. Measuring the uh, Cephids, where are they? Cephids, Cephids, Cephids in Andromeda, which is what I'm hoping to replicate. They only had, they had a big ass telescope, but they were using film. Essentially chemistry, you know, using light to uh, whatever, precipitate silver, colloidal silver. So, I have, better than this in several fashions, I've got CCDs just out of interest. This is, these are the waveguides for the Chandra thing. So, uh, basically the resolution that you get is how far the telescopes are apart, but it gets progressively technologically more challenging to to get it to work, you know, the bigger they are. Anyway, so this is the, the stairways to the Hooker telescope, and this is not the palatial uh, surroundings of the 200 inch and again there's this very s s distinctive characteristic smell of, of steam engine oil it's really just kind of dating these things and the, the decor is more like a battleship than uh, uh, than a telescope anyway here we are here we are and there it is that's the machine that Hubble used, oh, he actually had a buddy who did most of the taking of the photographs, but that's the 100 inch telescope, and this too now has active optics on it, in fact it's one of the places where they pioneered it, well, that looks rather modern on that side, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the active optics there, so you basically fire a laser up into the sky, to create an artificial star and then from how that artificial star shimmers you can correct your image and as you can see he's significantly smaller than the Palomar scope and that's the little observing chair which goes up and down on the on the uh, on the dolly it's where I've just had some uh, munchies I've sort of mm, become friends, I guess, with the uh, organisers or, or some of the folk who run the uh, Wilson Observatory. And this is the Hooker Telescope up in front of us, and this is Bridge to the Stars, where uh, George Ellery Hell, founder of the Mount Wilson Observatory, it's strict rules prohibiting astronomers from eating in the domes due to the risk of fires from cooking facilities. The footbridge that connects the 100 inch to the galley, small building which we just, which I was just looking at, uh, is where astronomers, which would have included folk like Hubble, uh, drank coffee, tea, and wait for the passage of clouds. And the picture here, you might recognise that renegade, that one's Einstein. And, uh, yeah, Hubble's not there, but they got president of the University of California and such like. So, yeah, Einstein stood here. 